So what's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Off-Road Obits. Tonight we have a special guest, a returning guest, is pretty much a co-host on this <laughs> podcast at this point. But this is my buddy Chris Morris. Say what's up, Chris. Hey, what's going on everybody? Yeah, Chris has been on here a couple of times. I just wanted to get Chris in here and we're going to talk about some stuff tonight. We'll probably go over some trips coming up. Yeah. We'll probably dive into the jeep affair the maybe the origin stories and stuff of that but which is now the off-road affair which is now the off-road affair and me and key the last podcast we kind of was it me and key we talked about it like why we changed the name okay cool but i mean i mean what do you think i mean i think it's a good thing that i changed i think it is a good thing not to be up with the times but uh it's more inclusive for every off-road vehicle yeah. we enjoy all of them so why not have the broncos and the toyotas and everybody come yeah. out there and and rip it up out there on the course so yeah and i did kind of get exhausted uh you know yeah we're we do the jeep affair well do y'all only let jeeps in well no we let you know any short wheel based vehicles and even some long base like the gladiators yeah. now but yeah. you know like if somebody came out there with a four-door long bed tacoma and wanted to do the course but yeah but we just don't want like f-150s and like you know stuff like that yeah and i mean we've had well like the uh the military wrecker come out there before mm -hmm. but that was like a very special yeah you know he got permission to go out there but it, it was cool seeing him drive around and everything yeah so. but i mean i i feel like now that we've changed it to the off-road affair it like we don't have to explain what it is the only thing we really have to say now is no four-wheelers yeah we don't we don't need all that out there they're too small and with that many off-road vehicles running around it, it, it that can get yeah, yeah that could get hairy quick yeah and you know, we do let side-by-sides in, but they've pretty much got to get approved by us before they come out there. We don't want, like, you know, 54-inch tractor tires on a side-by-side -side going across our course. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, I, I have a love-hate relationship with side-by-sides. I think they're I think they're cool. Um, they are. And now that you can, like, drive them legally on the road here in North Carolina, like, that's, that's pretty cool. That is awesome. Like, you know... That gives them like a dual purpose. Like you can literally like take your side by side and go drive somewhere to some private land and yep, you know, have fun and drive back to the house and no trailer. Yeah, which is really nice. Yeah, opens like, it up for more people. <laughs> and now I I, I kind of want to build a side by side, but I would it would have to be like very tasteful. Like I I really want to get like a Razor 1000 XP, like the long wheelbase ones. Yeah. And fab like a samurai, uh, Suzuki samurai body onto it. That would be cool. <laughs> That'd be really awesome. Just because it would just, I mean, I, I, I think there's a guy online that's done it and it looks like stupid clean. That would be awesome though. Yeah. And you'd have all that modern technology. Yeah. Yeah. With just the body of the samurai sitting on it. And probably, what, 10 times the horsepower? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Because. I mean, they've turboed and everything. Yeah. Yeah. So well, I, w I probably wouldn't want the turbo one, but I don't know. Um, Until you drive it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've heard the turbo ones, man. They don't like, like mud and stuff. Not that I would. I, I mean, I don't really care for mud either yeah. nowadays. I'm getting old, man. It just tears everything up. And yeah. then you got to come back and clean it all off. And yeah. that takes a whole day to get it done right. So. Well, see, like, I, I, I will go through mud. Like, if it's on the trail... Yeah, yeah. If it's on the trail, I'll go through it. It but can't be avoided. It, but if if there's, like... Like, if you're on a path, and then there's, like, this huge mud hole, I'm probably not going to go in that mud hole. I don't blame you. Like, you know, I'll go just bypass it. I hate coming back and cleaning whatever I'm taking out there. Yeah. So... Because, I mean, a lot of times, we, we used to go to this place in LaGrange, like, the clay pits. Yeah. And you, uh, you could go, talk like... about it. Like, you could... It, it was, like... Um, Kind of like the Jeep Affair uh, or the off-road affair course. Yeah. It was like just big heels. Like you could wheel all day, and the only thing, your tires would just be like you know, dirty. Yeah. Like not muddy, but like just dusty and dirty. Okay. You wouldn't even have to like wash it after. I was like, that was That's really nice. nice. Yeah, yeah, it is nice. Uh, and also, it, it's also the off-road affair and overlanding. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, we kind of we tend to forget that sometimes, but uh, we added the overlanding because 
who doesn't like to to camp out and yeah. enjoy the nice cool weather, especially the, the you know March when we do it. Uh, yeah. Because our next event is what March seventh uh, through the ninth. Yeah. So March seventh. 8th and 9th of yes. 2025 yep. at the Lenore County Fairgrounds in Kinston, North Carolina. <laughs> um, th this is your save the date, everybody that's uh, watching this. And it will be on Facebook and Instagram yep. and uh, eventually our website. We are in the process of currently updating that. So. Yeah, we're trying to transition from jeepaffair.com to offroadaffair.com. Yep. And... That's, that's, that's a lot that goes into events, man. There's a lot, and of course we keep trying to make it bigger and better and incorporate new things into it so that people yeah. don't get bored because that's that's one complaint we're very open we always ask everybody and we try to go around and talk to everybody and and get their opinion so that we can make the changes yeah. accordingly for the next year and it there there's a lot that people yeah. don't see that go into it man and, it's it's unreal like i i never thought like because like the the origin of the the jeep affair was Tanya Adams reached out to me on a Facebook message and was like, "Hey, I heard you're into Jeeps." I'm like, I, I, "Yeah, I dabble with them time to time." <laughs> and she was like, "I want to put an event on at the fairgrounds," and I was like, that, "That's that, that sounds cool." Yeah. And she was like, "What all do we need?" And I, like, the first thing I told her, or one of the first things, I was like, "You need something different." You need like a course where these people can drive on and not just sit and just talk about wheeling. You need to be able to, you know, you know, cash the check too. Yep. Um, not just like, and I know a lot of people like to go to parking lots and you know talk about it, but I was like, you know, let's let's make this different. Let's let's give these people let's offer something that no one else around here does. Yeah, because you can go to the the only place that I know where you get. Uh if you want to call it an off-road course, is like the beaches. When you go to the beach events, they've always got a course set up out there. Myrtle Beach. Yeah, yeah. Myrtle Beach Jeep Jam, the one in Florida, you mm -hmm. know. But it's the same thing. You're going over, you know, a couple, of at least with ours, we try to make it. There's some nasty spots. Yeah, there's some nasty spots out there. I mean, every year, and don't, I'm not saying this to scare people away by any means, uh, these people just like to beat on their stuff, but People go out there, and every year we have four or five people break, and yeah. I mean they break good. So but they it, they were. I would, I'm not going to say they were trying to break, but they knew what they were doing. Yeah, they knew if they didn't back off, that yeah. something was going to break. Yeah. Because I mean, we we were all standing there like, hey, you you know what you're doing? Like, yeah, I don't care. And the next thing you know, pop. Yep. So, I mean, I myself, I broke a Dana 60 stub shaft on the. <laughs> on the 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 light poles wow and uh but i was doing a four-wheel burnout what else did you break you were flexing on something the i broke cars. my sway bar sway bar yeah because I, I, I heard I that the, <laughs> i pulled the ball out of the socket on the heim joint yep. um on my anti-rock i was going up the side of a car that we have out there because we you can drive over cars out there yep um kind of gives you a monster truck feel yeah, but, getting something something a little different. Yeah, but uh, but back to like me and Tanya talking, you know. So we kind of jumped back and forth, and she was like, "Well, what do you need?" And I was like, "I need some, you know, big equipment, a date that would would work, yeah. and you know, maybe a couple of sponsors." And she was like, "Well, I'll handle the sponsors. I'll handle the um, the equipment, and I'll get." I think she got a food truck out there i mean she was on it for yeah. sure and all i had to do was just you know start pushing it start pushing it start pushing it and i met this guy out there one day one saturday morning at like 7 30 and it was like a couple of weeks before the course with a bulldozer and i had my dad's mini backhoe mm -hmm. and we made that whole like the old course yep, yep. with a uh, bulldozer that's awesome <laughs> and um and i, I think that's that, that kind of what separates us from like you know other events yeah because uh, it, it's permanent you know because she said after because you know the whole deal was whatever we put we have to you know level it out and i was like that's fine but it was such a success and you know i kind of 
low key put it in a spot where it was it, out of the way. It was out of the way. Like I kind of had it in my mind, like, you know, maybe we can keep it here. And she was good with it. She was like, yeah, leave it there. We'll do it again next year. And that, it kind of just escalated from there. Oh, yeah, it's definitely escalated because what do we see between four and 500 Jeeps? Mm -hmm. at, when it was just the Jeep affair, it was four or 500 Jeeps. Yeah. Now, opening it up like this, hopefully, you know, I, this upcoming event, I'd like to see a thousand vehicles out there. Yeah. I think that would be amazing. There's nothing better than walking around looking at everybody's rig and just all the different vendors out there, the camping going on, the night. You know, the nightlife's just as fun as during the day. As a matter yeah. of fact, it's more fun for us because we actually get to relax a little bit and walk yeah. around and meet everybody yeah. and enjoy the, the evening. I mean, because it's just, you know, it's, there's there's no, like, crazy partying going on. It's just, like, families. Yep, it's definitely a, a family event. It's definitely a family event. It's not uh, like Busco or anything. No, no. Uh, it. For the most part, it's pr it's pretty quiet. I mean, during up yeah. until about ten o'clock, you know, there, there's a lot of people out and about. So, it, it you know, it, it's a noisy on that aspect of things. But for the most part, yeah, it, people start to die down and quiet down. Yeah, and after then 10 we and then you know we have the night lights on the course on the new course now. Yep. So, um, they pretty much gave us the old four-wheeler racing course which is like clay where the other side is just like dirt oh yeah you know, they gave us that clay and man that that really changed things yeah that and uh, opened it up for us yeah we we definitely need to go revisit um the course you know change it up a little bit because that was like our thing you know we would change up every year every year something mm -hmm. yeah and unfortunately due to the the tropical storm Debbie they went through what last week we there was so much rain so much water on the course that we weren't able to get out there and do what we needed to do for our next event which is our small open course day yeah which was going to be held in September and so unfortunately we canceled that and that just gives us more time to prep and get ready for the, yeah. the big event yeah, so I, that we don't disappoint. I hated we had to cancel that event, but I mean, I felt like we needed to. Yeah, because it was so bad, man. It was so bad out there. It's still, you know, it, it's still bad. Extremely muddy. It's it, a lot of water in the holes and everything, and it's just not. It, we wouldn't be able to give back a, a product that no. we would be happy with. So I feel like we would more so disappoint people at this event, and I believe it would hurt us for the big, big event. event. Yeah. Just because we can't get any equipment onto the course because it's so muddy and filled with water. Yep. Like a couple of the, the dip downs that, you know, that we built. So we made some, I call them creek beds. Yeah. You know, yeah. we we dug them probably, what, 10 foot wide. 10 foot wide and some of them are about and, 10 feet deep. Yeah. and But we based them with concrete. So, you know, you get the feeling that you're actually, you know, in a creek bed. So when you're in it, you're looking at concrete on both sides of you. And they they were filled with water. Yeah, I mean, so anywhere from eight to ten feet of water, yeah. which takes like, a long time to to drain. Yeah, to drain. And, and we've got to fix them. So at the last event, they some of the holes got dug out. Pieces piece of the concrete. That's um, what I'm afraid of with all the concrete. The, because some of those slabs weigh probably a thousand pounds or more. Oh yeah, I guarantee that. Yeah, and you know we do need to rearrange them a little bit, but. I don't know. I would I, I would just hate for people to come to this event and pay, and I mean like, well, really? everything's filled with water. Yeah, or it's Sorry. so muddy I really couldn't do anything, or I'm not taking my rig out there. Yeah, and, you know, because our open course days we don't have all the vendors, we don't have all the food trucks, so there's there's nothing but the course. It's just kind of like a run what you brung. Yeah, which a lot of people here in Eastern North Carolina love. That. Yeah, they look forward to that. Uh, a lot of people were upset that we weren't holding it, but I think they ultimately they understood why we canceled it. Yeah. And it's also a great opportunity for the the newer, the novice uh, wheeler that that they really haven't done much, but they want to get out there and kind of get their feet wet. Yeah. It's a perfect time, perfect you know uh, opportunity to get out there and do that, and then have people. All, that are on the course that go wheeling all the time be able to explain how to use their winch and yep. how to use four-wheel drive properly and so i mean it, it's really cool to me to see like there was people out there that 
you know, didn't know how to use their winch, and somebody was like, like a complete stranger would walk up, hey, I, I got you, man. Like, I'll help you. You know, what you do is you, you know, you put it in the unwind, and you do this, and, or free spool, and then they would, like, show them, like, just yeah. like, you know, and they were like, thanks, man. And just complete strangers. Like, it's weird to me seeing complete strangers being nice to each Especially other. Especially in this day and age. <laughs> yeah. But it's... It, it's refreshing that the off-road community hasn't totally lost that. Oh yeah. Because I mean, you, obviously, you still you get your jerks everywhere. Uh, yeah. You see it all the time on social media and and. Jk guys, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we I think we run a pretty good event. Um, it's constantly evolving, and we want to keep making it better and do a lot for our our local community here in Kenston. And yeah. it's just it's something nice to be able to go to and enjoy and, and get out there with other people with, and meet them from South Carolina and Virginia and yep. all parts of North Carolina, you know, because we've had them from all over the place and it's it's nice to see. Yeah, Makes and and you know when just you know I'll I'll be open and honest like we don't make anything from this. I have not profited one dollar from this event. If I'm being totally honest, and this might be putting a little too much out there, but we actually, a lot of us personally lose money. Y yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I take my vacation time. I take almost a week of vacation just for this event. Yeah. And it's nonstop. It's go, go, go from the time, you know, from about two weeks out until the, you know, after the event. And then all the planning, months and months ahead, we're all already planning. All the phone calls. Yeah, all the phone calls, the reaching out to different Emails. people. Emails to food trucks, to vendors, you know, it, it is a lot of work, uh, a lot of sleepless nights, yep. a lot of, you know, upsetting the family because we're putting yes. a lot of time towards the event instead of family time. And luckily, a lot of them understand that it's, it's an important thing to us personally to see it grow the way it has. And then it's important to the community that we do it because it's bringing us all together it yeah. might only be for that weekend, but it's still bringing the community together, and we give back a lot to our community. Yeah, so, it, and every event that we have done, ever since the first event, we have always split the profits 50-50. Yeah. And yeah. Um, 50 goes to, I think we did, we donated to the veterans, to the GI Joes. Yep, we've done that. And then we did Children's Hospital, and then we donated to the family of Fishman, Sergeant Fishman. Yep, yep. That Sergeant died, Matt Fishman, that who died passed in away the, in Goldsboro, yep. uh, PD. Um, and then this event. The past one? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we donated to the Lenore County Sheriff's Department. Yep. And did we donate? I, I think that's... Yeah, it was the Sheriff's Department. Yeah. They bought... Uh, I think they bought what two new canines or something. Two new canines, and I think they were some trying vests. To, yeah, vests for the canines. Yeah, like I three thousand dollar vests. Yeah, it's insane they were, how expensive they are. But yeah, but I mean, I, I think they were you know truly grateful. They were, um, and you know everybody has been like truly grateful. I mean, you know we we donate thousands. You know it's yep. like you know maybe I'm being too honest or spilling too much tea here, but you know we're donating thousands of dollars to these organizations. I'm not just like patting ourselves on the back. I'm thankful. You know, no, I think it's good to be transparent about these things. Yeah, uh, you know, so not only do we donate thousands back into the community. And we try to keep it local. Yeah, uh, I think that's only fair. But yeah, we donate back to the community, and then not only that, but so all the money that is made through this event, it, it takes a lot to put an event like this on. Also, with all the rentals that we have to you know get out here for whether it's poor potties or heavy equipment rentals. That stuff adds up really, really quick. Yeah, that's and, what the other 50% goes to. Yeah, and then keeping the lights on out there at the fairgrounds yeah. as well. Um, Trying to upkeep, keep the grass cut, keep weeds spraying. You know, we've got sponsors. You know, um, uh, Paul, you know, he does sponsor yep. the event. Yep. And, uh, you know, he does some weed spraying. But, I mean, you know, it, it takes a lot. It does take a lot. and I, uh, I had no idea because I'd never done any event until – <laughs> the 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 first Jeep affair and I was like holy crap it's like, crazy nitty. to to think about because uh as everybody knows I don't know when this is released it'll probably be over but you know you got the Smoky Mountain Jeep invasion in Pigeon Forge Tennessee and they've got the huge Lacante Center there where they have a, a lot of stuff inside and a lot of stuff outside 
putting on our small event here in Kinston with you know four to five hundred off-road vehicles and they have twenty thousand plus just Jeeps yeah I can't even imagine the kind of detail and stress. headache and stress that those people go through now I know they do that that that's a money maker a big money maker yeah. you know for their their community but um I couldn't even imagine putting something like that on that's insane so, but I mean, it's, it's cool what they do. I've never personally been to the Smoky Mountain Jeep Invasion, but I definitely want to go. Um, like we were talking about earlier, yeah. I had I had a bunch of people message me like, "Hey, you, you gonna you gonna be there?" I'm like, "No." You got a lot of cool vehicles, man. Uh, you know, I'd like to see. Well, you're you're sponsored by quite a few people. I'd like to see them say, "Hey, why don't you come bring out some of your vehicles and put them on display for us?" Because you know that's, that's that's like the big thing out there. Yeah, is uh, you know they'll. They'll help a build out, and then they come out there and set up, and it's a good time. I've been twice, and I like to go out early, leave on like a Tuesday, be there Wednesday, opens up I think Thursday. You know, you go to the event, hang out, do all that, see everything on Thursday, and then you can just go chill. Go, I mean, you can go to Windrock. Windrock's right down the road, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. um, and wheel for a couple days. And then at night, when you come back, you know, Probably not your thing, but you can drive up and down the strip, and you can see every Jeep that's out there, and there's just so much going on. It's uh, it's impressive. I definitely want to go because I, like I said, I've I've never been just because my my thing is like if I'm gonna drive that far, I'm going wheeling. I'm not going to hang out in a parking lot, but I need to. I need to do better <laughs> about stuff like that. Hey, man, that's all a part of uh, <laughs> social media and, and YouTube I know. I, and everything else. I, 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 I do. I, I suck at, like, uh, networking, I guess. Like, I'd rather be in the woods by myself. I had, uh, <laughs> well, I'll, 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 the Belgian Jeep girl, she's out of, uh, I think, Wilmington. Um, mm -hmm. I've met her once before in person uh, out at the beach there at Fort Fisher, and she was super nice. She came out there and met me, and she messaged me and was like, "Hey, are you going to the the you know Pigeon Forge to the Smoky Mountain Jeep Invasion?" I was like, "Ah, not this year," you know. And um, I was actually talking to her a little bit, and she's roommating with another big influencer, and they're gonna go meet up with some of their other you know friends yeah. that are influencers, and it's it's a great networking tool because you know it doesn't take much to meet basically everybody that you see through instagram or facebook i wonder how much it would cost to have a six feet under fab booth there just just i don't need i don't need a sponsor i'll sponsor myself that would be really cool <laughs> that would be awesome uh i don't know man I, I don't know if it'd be that bad i feel like i'd be like the hot dog stand at the baseball games like in between the men's and women's bathroom or something <laughs> <laughs> you ever like you ever yeah, notice that like yeah. Kid, like yeah the napkins and the ketchup uh, and the mustard is right in between the uh, restrooms there. Oh, okay. Hey, you guaranteed uh, foot traffic, right? <laughs> dude, yeah, that is true. <laughs> like, dude, hey, did everything come out all right? Here's a sticker. Yeah. Here's <laughs> <laughs> you never know. You, you can dry your hands on this T-shirt here for twenty bucks. There you go. Six feet under fab. <laughs> dude, I want like I'm I'm calling them and see if there's a spot available for next year. By the bathroom. You I would definitely uh reach out soon. Yeah. The sooner I the bet better. You they, it fills up quick. They fill yeah. up really quick. Uh I think they have like two hundred and fifty plus vendors. I probably couldn't afford it. <laughs> I don't I don't know. You, I don't know. The only one way to find out is reach yeah. out and ask. So yeah, that would be pretty cool though. Yeah. Just have like the the Cherokee, the full size Cherokee and like the Comanche out there. Yeah, that'd be awesome. That'd be, those are two of your nicest rigs. I mean, they're like, I like if if there was like a nuclear explosion, only take like two vehicles, it those, would be those. Those two? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I, I don't know if I could pick a favorite, though. <laughs> That's well, the only thing. the one that I'm looking forward to seeing you build is definitely the J10. Yeah. yeah I can't I can. wait to see that one being built. Yeah. That's one of my favorite Jeeps out there, so... The body lines, man, you can't beat like just something about it. Like I, I, I do love Comanches. Like I have always loved Comanches. Like you know, the Comanche I have now, I think I've said this before on here, but like it's like my high school 
dream build. Like I remember drawing pictures in <laughs> high school, like not paying attention of Comanches with like a stretched Comanche with a snorkel and big mud tires. This is exactly what you got. And like um uh, like a bed thing on the back or a camper shell on the back and you know some cool designs like it is literally like my high school dream truck but you can't beat the body lines and like the style of the full-size jeeps can't do it yeah um they've done some cool stuff with the new gladiators but this new stuff it doesn't compare to you couldn't even put your jeep in neutral like i know 15 yeah. minutes ago it wouldn't even go into neutral. yeah we were, we were literally <laughs> <laughs> we, we just wanted to be able to move it around and the stupid thing locks <laughs> and, and won't let you i that that's the only bad thing about these new vehicles they're, they've got they're, way too many safety things on them and the biggest issue with the new jeeps this is getting probably way off topic is there's it's too much computer controlled I too agree. much is out of our hands. Yep, I agree. It's like I, AI is just driving this. I prefer to much. be more one with the vehicle. Yeah. Um, now, I, I, I defer a little bit. You prefer a manual on the I trails. Do. I prefer an automatic. However, on the road, sports car, give me a manual any day. Yeah. I, I say manual all day long. Like, I, I know, like, a lot of people are like, oh, I only rock crawl with automatic. Well, that just means you don't have talent. Like y'all can argue in the comments. Yeah, on yeah, this. definitely. Like, please, like, would you rather wheel an automatic on the rocks or would you rather wheel a manual on the rocks? I say manual. I think a lot of people. It also comes down to age. Yeah. Uh you're still pretty young. Wait till you get a little bit older. Oh yeah, I thought about that. Yeah, because Stacy, remember last time we were in Yawari? Stacy's yeah. like, man, my knee, he had a knee brace on. He did. He did have a knee and brace on. And he was on. like, oh, you know, he was like, I'm seriously considering an automatic because yeah. it was just so much. Yeah, he told me he knee. was thinking about getting an automatic just because his knee was bothering him so much. Yep. Just like, you know, clutching, clutching, clutching. But honestly, you know, I kind of have a cheat code in the Comanche. I have, what did it all go? I have, <laughs> <laughs> I have the hand throttle. Yep. Or the, they call it the third foot. It's basically just a bicycle brake lever yep. uh, or shifter and then i have the four to one rubicon transfer case so like that one used to i would have to like you know clutch in clutch in clutch in but now it's just like first gear and let it and just let her go and the only time you push the clutch in is when you pop it into second or third to you know start ripping yeah but so i will say like if you I, I prefer manuals as long as there's a four to one in the Jeep. That makes sense. That um, makes sense. Because I wheeled the Gladiator at Uari mm -hmm. two weeks two weeks ago, That's and it's a manual. Not a four to one. Not though. a four to one. Um, I did. I think I stalled it out twice, but um, okay. I was expecting to stall it out a lot more than that. But I think they ha they have like an anti stall feature or something in them. It's. I don't know the the new clutches in them are so light. It's weird. It is very weird. Uh, I drove Ford manuals for a long time, and they're typically very heavy. Mm -hmm. In Jeeps, it's like it's not even there hardly. The first time I drove that one, like I stomped it because you know I'm used to the Comanche. You, you know that one, some... you got to be like, Pow! but this one it was just like, like you could take your pinky and just and like push it down. So it. did you actually enjoy wheeling it though? I did. Okay. It's it's long. It is definitely long, and I really want to bob to bed really bad. <laughs> well, so I'm going this weekend to Uari and With the Gladiator? With the Gladiator. Sick. I don't think I'm going to do the front side of Daniel, though, with it. I just don't want to tear it up. Dude, I'll, I didn't tear mine up. Yeah, yeah okay. A lot. If y'all haven't seen it, go back and watch his video where he... <laughs> and yeah. see what he did to his Gladiator. Um, I broke my soft top, I scratched it, I broke my tail light, and something else. Your mirror. I broke my mirror off. All on the front side. I, I didn't have any damage until I went in the front side of Daniel. Yeah, I think I'll stick to like Dutch John, Dickie Bell, and the back side of Daniel. I, I might ride with somebody and get footage of the yeah. front side. I just don't want to tear that up. Now, I will, when I take the Cherokee out there, 
we'll let it rip but oh yeah oh yeah and um how surprised were you when you got to my shop tonight extremely surprised <laughs> you couldn't wipe the smile <laughs> off my face I, it, the ulterior motive when i asked him to come to the podcast tonight i finished his <laughs> cherokee finally the white cherokee is done for now there's still some stuff we got to order but it's yeah. it's drivable it you could wheel it right now oh yeah it could definitely be wheeled yeah. right now but um I, I didn't tell him it was ready i mean it's been how long has it been here it's been at your shop for probably eight months yeah you've been working on it for about five yeah dude i don't even know the hours and I, like <laughs> <laughs> he would message me at midnight or one o'clock in the morning and be like, and he was just getting done working on it or he was sending me something and he still wasn't done working on it yeah. so Dude, I, I, I would know. stay out here to like one or two. No, I, I don't know if I ever stayed out here that like two o'clock. But, um, but well, by the time I got showered and in the bed, it was two o'clock. Yeah. But, um, dude, I'll be honest with you, I quit counting hours at like fifty hours. <laughs> like, I just quit. I was like, whatever. Like, I just I got to get this done. But it, I know it was a lot. So, all the suspension was done. Yep. Uh, all the steering was done. Yep. Brand new ball joints on it. Uh, frame stiffeners. F all the the full length frame stiffeners were bumper done. Bumper to bumper. Yep. Bumper to bumper. You tidied up the bumpers front and rear. Cut and put end caps on the rear bumper. All the interior was taken out and Raptor lined the entire floor. After other, uh, it was all sanded down and cleaned out. And the rust repair. And the ru oh, and then tons of rust repair on the unibody. A unibody. You could literally stick your hand inside of the unibody where the gas tank is. Again, and you can see all this. It's all documented on his yeah. YouTube channel. Uh, so definitely check it out if, if XJs are your thing. But what else? Oh, water pump. Water pump. Thermostat. New, fa new fans. Thermostat. Uh, new cables from JeepCables.com. Yeah, yeah, the Jeep Cables actually sponsored. And, yeah, they sponsored that build. Yeah, and they sent out a the big seven. So shout out to Jeep Cables. They're yeah, awesome. Check and they them out. look absolutely amazing too. Yeah, you, and it it cranks up better too. I didn't notice that. Well, like it's like you you can it, it's a difference in the starter. Yeah, like, before it, it I don't know had a little bit of lag kind of. Yeah, um, and then, and um, I'm putting out a video this Friday on the me installing the jeep cable so this okay. will probably be a week it's like some back to the future stuff but this will be like the week after but you can see i i take the cable off the terminal and i just like do my fingers like this and you can see it's just like like just corrosion dust dang just coming out of that 24 year old cable it was bad that that xj honestly if if briley wouldn't have got his hands on it it probably would have gone to the junkyard because it, it needed it, a lot of work, more work than I am ever capable of doing. And I don't know many people that would be willing to take on that kind of job. So It was rough. I'm, I'm not even going to – I'll be honest with you. Like, it was. Like we're, we're being very honest on this podcast tonight. That was a ton of – It was a lot more than I thought it was going to be. But the more he dug into it, the more pictures he would send me and be like, yeah, I need you to order this, or I need you to get this, or yeah, it's gonna take me a little longer than I expected because this thing's completely shot. I thought I could turn it around because I was supposed to have this Jeep done by like <laughs> how many Jeep events ago? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so, I, I'm I'm definitely not quick, uh, but this isn't my full time job. You know, th I yeah. do this from like I get my kids to sleep at nine, and then I work in my shop from like nine thirty to twelve, like. That's that's pretty much like I, I I try to get out of here by twelve. Yeah, yeah. I have to work all day the next day. Yeah, it's but, more of a hobby. I don't know. Yeah, yeah part time know. gig. Yeah, part time gig. Yeah, yeah. As, uh, side hustle. Because mine was definitely I wouldn't say fun. At, maybe at one point, but I think it became not fun. Yeah, there was some points in the build where I was just over it over it and that sucks that really sucks but i'll tell you and me and um zach talked about this on the podcast like the list like if you have being able list, to mark that list off dude i'm telling you there is nothing like it like if you write down like like marking off like frame stiffeners or unibody stiffeners 
Yep. Man, that was just like a carnival cruise. And that's a lot of work. I mean, yeah. doing that. That's a lot of time involved in those. A, a lot, lot of welding. welding. <laughs> yeah. And, and just to get to that point, though, was a lot. Cause Sanding off the unibody gunk. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then as you were digging into that rust and finding more rust and then having to cut it back even more. Because I, I, that, that was... My, I was, you know, stabbing everything with a screwdriver, and you know it was solid. But then I would try to weld to it, and it, and just, it just blow through, and I'd have to just cut because I didn't want to cut, you know, a huge section of unibody out. So yeah. I would, you know, have to, you know, I, I wanted to keep everything, you know, square and true and yep. uh, a plumb or whatever the terms are. But I mean, it's, it's solid now. For it looks sure. so good. Uh, Definitely check out the, the YouTube channel and see the, the, the final, the finale of it because yeah. I, I really couldn't wipe off the smile when I got <laughs> walked in here and he's like, all right, it's done. I'm like, oh my God, yes. I, I was going to get you and just tell you that, um, like, yeah, I got a bunch more stuff I got to do to it, little stuff, and then tell you that it was done like on the podcast. <laughs> but um, I took that picture yesterday. That's sick. Uh, oh. On the road. I don't know if y'all can see that. That's so awesome. But, um, yeah, I drove it, and, I mean, it drove, like, I, I, I didn't do, I did, like, a kind of, like, a eye alignment. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, that's what I like to refer to them as, like, that looks about right. Yeah. And I drove it. The steering wheel was straight. The uh, no death wobble. Okay. And it hasn't even had, like, an alignment alignment yet. Uh, like, you know, somebody with an alignment rack yeah. do it. And it drives nice really good so in that jeep i you know we drove it from virginia back here <laughs> to north carolina <laughs> so that kills me so man. from Ferdicksburg, virginia to where we are here in north carolina it's 250 miles and i can tell you every bridge we hit was like jesus take the steering wheel because <laughs> it was those tires were rocking back and forth i mean it was scary it Y'all was really Carrie sketchy Underwood? and then <laughs> You didn't tell them. <laughs> the brake line. The brake line. Holy crap. The brake line. I've never seen a brake line <sighs> rust. It was a steel. So whenever I was bleeding the brakes, because I had, I had found a rusted spot, and I had told you about yep, it. Yep, you did. Um, that was probably a couple of months ago. I was like, I'm going to have to, you know. Do some brake lines. Do some brake lines. And... So, I wanted to to see. I be, I wanted to see if it would leak. Yeah. And it busted, as I was bleeding the brakes. It's, yeah, which you showed it, me tonight. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it had holes in it, like, and then literally broke apart. Yeah. I mean, you could take the steel brake lines and just just crinkle it almost in your hands. And you drove that here. Drove it all the way from Virginia. <laughs> Dude, I'm, I would. That is that's insane. It's pretty to me. wild. It's pretty wild. And I mean, everything was shot on it. All the bushings, yep. everything, everything, everything was ball shot. Ball joints, ball gone. joints were shot. U joints were gone. I replaced those. Yeah, too. you did. You replaced the U joints on it. I yeah. mean, I put it's, the nice ones in too. Yeah, it's got a lot of. So it's got a lot of work done to it. A ton of work done to it, which needed to be done. But I can tell you, in a year or two, it's definitely getting a long arm kit. Yeah, I mean, uh, I've it, got other plans for it. Yeah, it would it would probably ride a lot better with a long arm. I'd like to see it on 37s and a long arm. So that, that, that's eventually going to happen. But you I mean, know, it's, it's it's a cool Jeep now. I mean, for what it is, I'm looking forward to beating it on, beating, you know, beating it up. Out I mean, there. it's a budget build. I mean, that's the whole purpose of this build. Like, yeah, because we built um, Locklear's Jeep, and he kind of he went a little he went a little. Uh, he didn't one ton swap it, but he did uh, what, eight point eight in the forty four in the front. Yeah, eight point eight forty four in the front, thirty sevens, uh, long arm kit, front and rear. And who do you get his kit from? I can't Rusty's. Remember. Rusty's. Yep. And uh, all armored up with motor. Yeah, built. yeah. We armored every single thing. It's kind of like a two tone gray and black. Yep. I built it on the YouTube channel. If y'all want to check it out, it's pretty pretty neat. Yeah, that's a nice TJ. Really I mean, nice. it's, we took it to Uari, and we were hanging with one-ton TJs like it weren't nothing. Yeah. I mean, at one point, he even <laughs> he let it rip a couple times off yeah. those rocks and was b hopping it and bouncing it. Yeah. And 
Oh, and we, we finally got the locker in the rear. And dude, that thing is like a mountain goat. Yep. Um, yep. The only thing is just a little tall. We got to bring it down. But anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> it's like the ADD channel. Yeah. But so we built, you know, the TJ, and then we were gonna we kind of we did a moderate build with that. You know, it wasn't like a hundred thousand dollar build. Yeah. It was like yeah. a twelve, thirteen hundred dollar build. I don't know if his wife watches. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then like yours, we just kind of did, you know, budget. It was all budget. Uh, the problem with mine, which kind of added up over time, is it was a lot of budget yeah. stuff. Yeah. Which adds up. And but it wasn't anything crazy like a $2,800 suspension. No. It was, uh, I think with taxes, shipping, and everything, it was thirteen or $1,400. Yeah. And that's a, a short arm kit from Rough Country. Uh, it did have adjustable control arms. There were I had a little bit of criteria there. I, I know Rough Country's like, you know, oh my God, stay away from it. Um, but like you said, it, it was a budget build. It's a go out and have fun, beat up, you know, beat on it a little bit, and then later on, upgrade it. I say we'll see if we can break the Rough Country stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it, you know, this would be a great opportunity to see, one, how long everything holds up. Yeah. And see if anything can break on it. I mean, I'm sure we'll break something, but... And it'll, it'll be here on the YouTube channel yeah. for sure. And, yeah, all that will be on the YouTube channel. Even if Briley's not on that wheeling trip with me, I will video it and yeah. send him the video so that it can be put on the channel. So, um, I, I still plan on hauling the Cherokee and the TJ to Uwari, and we're going to go, like neck on neck to neck that would be awesome you know because you got the wheelbase you got a longer wheelbase than him so you're going to be able to do stuff that he can't but he's got front and rear lockers so yeah. he's going to be able to do stuff that you can't yeah so, that's one thing yeah i will have to send it a little harder to yeah get over things like that which but i mean that was that's the whole point of this build series so yeah yeah <laughs> to see uh you know which one would do better you know for you because there's not a lot of people out there that can you know spend you know fifteen thousand dollars or twenty thousand dollars on a on a build you know they would have to get the rough country you know stuff like that which there's nothing wrong with it but you know. no and that's like so um we see it all the time on facebook especially facebook facebook's horrible yeah and i run i run nc gladiators here in north carolina and i've got about 1400 people in that and you'll see People ask questions. Now, luckily, that group, they keep it very nice, pro professional. Yeah. Um, however, on other groups, if you bring up rough country or you ask any questions, people jump down your throat, and it's ridiculous. Yeah, Facebook is the new pirate 4x4. It, it, <laughs> I mean, it's insane. You, you know, you got a lot of kids yeah. Uh, we don't know what anybody's situation is. So it's like, look, if they can afford rough country and they want to go out there and wheel, let them do it. Yeah. So that way they can go out there with their friends and have a good time. Who cares? Worst case scenario, they learn. Yeah. and if Maybe they, we learn that, like, this rough country kit isn't what we need to have on this. Yep. Uh, maybe or, you run it for 15 years. I, or maybe you run it and you you find the things that break, replace it with the more expensive, better product. If you know, and and but everything else is working fine, so leave it alone. I mean, yeah, that's where I'm at with it. Like, we'll, we'll find out with the XJ, and it'll be yeah. great. And um, you can y'all you know, be able to follow along with it and watch the the whole you know everything go down. So yeah, I think. I mean, if great. it breaks, it's gonna be right back here in the shop. You know? <laughs> it'll be right back here in the shop, and Briley be cussing me, and yeah, it'll be it'll be wonderful. But hey, guys, I've got to fix this uh, two control arms that used to be one. But <laughs> nah, I, I don't I don't think I don't think it's that bad. Cause I mean, the the rough country kit. I mean, I I mean it looked decent. I've seen worse welds on like nicer stuff before. So. Trust me. My thought is, is I, I have heard in the past that their bushings are not the greatest. Yeah. So I'm curious to see how long they hold up. And other than that, like I said, I went with the adjustable so mm -hmm. that, you know, you could, we Fine could get everything, it. you know, aligned perfectly the way it needed to be done. So I, I that's one thing I definitely suggest. If you are going to buy a cheaper kit, spend a little bit of extra money and get the adjustable, adjustable 
you know, control arm so that you can get everything in alignment. And uh, that way, you know, another thing too, like say if you wanted to go like, you know, put like a inch and a half inch puck on top or spacer on top of that spring, you can, you can expand you can, that out. You can adjust it out. Cause yep. like, you know, those, those are adjusted way in. Like yep. there's probably, you know, four inches of, cause you know, I did it by what the direction said. It was yeah. like 16 and a half, 15 and a half um, for the lowers. And there's there's a chunk of still in there that you could, you know, run out if you wanted to, you know, put a spacer on it. So, yeah, because I mean I've got core four by four on my Gladiator, mm -hmm. and now that was, you know, I, I spent thirty six hundred dollars on that kit, so quite a bit more, you know, money on that one, and those are capable of going all the way up to a six inch lift, and all I've got on it right now is uh, three and a half, three eight. and a half on yeah. that. So there's room for expandability, although I do want to, well, we'll see what route I go. I'm kind of more focused on the XJ right now, so. Yeah, uh, you need swampers. Put in the comments that he needs swampers, everybody. <laughs> it, I think it definitely needs a long arm in the future, but and that'll swampers. be, and yeah. swampers. Yeah, of course, it needs swampers. <laughs> what size swampers does it need, though? Now keep in mind, it's stock axles as of right now. Yeah. In the future, I do plan on changing it out. I don't know if it'll be Dana 44's front and rear, if it's 8.8 .8 in the rear with a 44 up front. I don't know yet, but... I would do... I don't know if I would do Swampers just because they're so expensive now. Unless you find, like, a good used set, but... I... Swampers are expensive, man. They used to be, like, the cheap tires that you would get, like, if you were broke and wanted a mud tire. That's like what you Interco. Buy. Yeah. But now it's just like... Yeah, it's like... Six hundred dollars a tire. No, you got to get a lot of, I guess, like off-brand yeah. type if you want to go cheap now. I would. And then it's it's hit or miss. It's like rolling the dice. You yeah. know, you you don't know if you're gonna get a good one or if it's gonna be a bad one. Um, I don't know. I would I would put like a beefy thirty-three. Yeah, yeah. On it and. Which there's a lot of good ones out there. I just got to figure you know, out what you can I want. get a good 33 mud tire for not that much. No, no. Um, I know for a fact I could get it for. Depending on what what brand I go with, I know I can get it under nine hundred dollars. Yeah, but honestly, I would just like I would drive it the way it is now and just let's work out any kinks. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So right now <laughs> it's got the stock Gladiator uh, mud trains on it. Yeah, what so are those like thirty? They're like a thirty-two point six or something oh, like that yeah. just under a 33 yeah. but they're brand new they don't look bad it's just I, I i just like mud tires yeah and they're falcon uh wild peaks yeah uh they're not not that aggressive yeah but i think i think they'll do okay for for it for now so. if you air them down they'll probably surprise you yeah uh, i'll probably do a beach run in it and then just for fun and yeah. then take it to Somewhere, it, you know, and then another thing: if you go up to a thirty-five, then it's gonna be like, well, I kind of need to re-gear. Well, I kind of want to put lockers. Well, do I really want to put gears and lockers in a Dana thirty? Honestly, then, that's <laughs> kind of where I'm at now. I'm like, <laughs> I really want to lock it, you know, with a, just a lunchbox locker, you know. But do you really want to throw money at a Dana thirty? But that's where I'm at. But then, like we were talking about earlier, you watch somebody like Dex, yeah, on Dex Jeeps, and you're like. Uh, you know, he's running like a 33, maybe a 35, and he is jumping it, beating on it, yeah, and not breaking it. Yeah, so yeah, it's, I, I don't know, man. I don't know. It's one of those things. Maybe I'll do it in time. Yeah. I'll buy the, the axles, and then over time, build them, build them, you know, because unfortunately, I don't have the funds just to throw at it all at once like some people do. I, that would be great, but I don't. It's a budget so. build. It, yeah, it's a budget build. So what I'll probably do is buy them and be like, here you go, Briley. <laughs> Can you fix these for me over time? Like, hey, guys, we're building uh, some Dana 44s today. Yep. Some so. Wagoneer Dana 44s front and rear would be cool. Yeah, I wish, what was it Watson's? Mm -hmm. I wish Watson's was still around because yeah. I'd love to get some waggy what, there, wide track. Yeah, they're low pinion, but that's what I had in that Jeep on the wall right there. I don't know if y'all can see it, but... Um, no, I don't think no, they can. The WJ, can. I had Wagoneer axles in that and 37s, and I beat the snot. And that's that like thing. my goal. I want 37s on that XJ. Yeah. I think that's and like that. That WJ is heavy. I mean, that's basically like a Chrysler minivan. 
Yeah. And 37s. Did that have the 5.9 or 4.0? 4.0. 4.0. Nice. Yeah. But that's uh, another story for another day. Yeah. But anyway, guys, you got anything else? No, I'm, I'm good. I, that, this was fun. I enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And well, I'm tickled um, that the uh, XJ is all done now. Yeah, so. that is cool. But anyway, guys, I appreciate y'all watching. I appreciate Chris for coming out and finally getting the Cherokee out of my shop. I let him back it out. So, <laughs> yes. That's always like the best part of every build, like just backing it out. Oh, yeah. Just yeah. backing it out. It's crazy. But I know it'll be back in here, you know, for other upgrades. But anyway, guys, I appreciate y'all watching, and we'll see you on the next one. Woo! How long was that? I don't know. That was a good one.